Good morning and welcome to Year 2 Reads Monsters. Our book this week is called The Day the Crayons Came Home. Now the author of our book we can see written on the front cover is Oliver Jeffers. Some of you may have read the book The Day the Crayons Quit and this book is very similar you can see it's in the same style. Now our focus skill for the moment is predicting. To predict, I'd like you to look at the clues that you can see on the front cover and think what the book might be about. So I can see that there's a green crayon with what looks like a stick and a parcel on his back. It reminds me a little bit of what Puss in Boots would use. And he seems to be either going somewhere or coming back from somewhere and he looks quite happy. So I'd imagine he's had quite a nice time wherever he's been or wherever he's going. Now, I wonder if he's actually coming back from his holiday because if I look at the title it said they came home so he's coming back and also if I look at what he's standing on it seems to be a postcard and, and often we send postcards to family members or loved ones or people we care about when we come back from somewhere. Now on the whiteboard are three key words that we're going to clarify that we need to know to read our next piece of text. The red word is basement, the blue word is scared, and my dark blue word is Halloween. Now sometimes we may already know what these words mean from our background knowledge, but if not, we need to clarify. At the bottom of your screen are three definitions. I'd like you to read those three definitions through. My purple definition, the night of the 31st of October, which is often celebrated by dressing up in scary costumes. Now, I think this definition matches up with Halloween because I know it's often a time when people dress up in scary costumes. And I remember lots of you dressed up um, in October time too. So that leaves me with basement and scared and two more definitions. I'm going to read my orange definition next. So this means the floor of a building which is entirely below ground level. Well, I don't think that means scared, but I'm going to read the next one. My green definition, feeling frightened or fearful. Now, I think if people feel scared, they do often feel frightened. So I think that means scared. And that must mean that a basement is a floor of a building below ground level, so underground. If you've not seen a picture of this before with your adult, you might want to look for an image online. These three words are going to help us by understand in understanding what our text is all about. Now this is the teach aloud where I get to read to you. There are some words underlined and I'm going to be using the sum of the stems at the top of the page to help me really understand, really think about what this book is all about. Hey Duncan, remember last Halloween we told your little brother there was a ghost under the basement stairs. Then we drew that scary stuff on the wall now the start of my piece of text starts with Hey Duncan. Now this part makes me think that this is a letter and hey is often when you're quite good friends with somebody, it's quite informal. So whoever's writing this letter to Duncan must be good friends with them. Now the word Halloween was a word that we clarified before and both of these sentences end in question marks. Now this makes me think if I read through the text that maybe he thinks Duncan won't remember. So maybe it was quite a long time ago that Halloween happened and maybe they don't see each other very often either because if you saw somebody all of the time you'd think they would remember. Now when it says here that they told Duncan's little brother that there was a ghost under the stairs and scary stuff, both of those words ghost and scary are capitalised. Now when I read this word it really makes me want to stress it so ghost or scary. And this really makes me think that the two characters together aren't that kind, especially seen as it says it's Duncan's little brother, so maybe they're picking on him a little bit. This is your turn to read. I've underlined and highlighted some word in blue. Both of these words have a piece of punctuation in them. I'd like you to identify what that punctuation means and to tell me what the whole word would be. I'd also like you to look at the orange word. What does this tell us about the character? 
And finally, in purple, I have three dots. What's this piece of punctuation called? And why do we use them? Now this is the third page. No words, but I can still tell a lot from it. The crown looks really nervous. The pictures that are drawn on the wall almost look like they're kind of looming towards the crayon, kind of jumping towards him with their arms up and their mouths open there and their eyes wide. And there's a witch on here. Now witches are often thought of to be quite scary and, and often associated with Halloween. So I wonder how long this crown has been down there. Now today, we have five questions. These questions are for you to complete independently. But to be able to answer questions accurately, we need to know what the question stem is telling us. I'm going to read through those questions. I'm going to go through the question stems and then I'd like you to give it a try. Question number one. Who is the glow in the dark crayon writing the letter to? Okay, so who is my question stem here? My next question. Why did Duncan's brother run away screaming? So here my question stem is why. Why does Glow in the Dark Crayon want to leave the basement? Question number four. List three characters that Duncan drew on the wall of the basement. So this isn't exactly a question stem, but it's a direction, it's list. And my final question, tick, true or false. So I need to think about tick and true or false. Now question number three, why does glow in the dark crown want to leave the basement? And question number four, both of them I can use the final page, I can use the images to help me come up with that answer. So I'm using my skill of inference. So my key cash question words. When I'm answering a who question, my answer needs to be a person. When I'm asking a why question, my answer needs to be a reason. The word list, this makes me think of a shopping list. So often when you list something, you um, write it down on a piece of paper and this one asks us to list. So put them down, jot them down. My last key question word was tick. And it did also say we could cross. So you're just in that table, either tick or cross, whether it's true or false. Now remember true means it's correct and false means it's incorrect. Give the questions a go and let us know how you get on.